Hello, welcome to the Women in Motorsports. Joe San Diego here, along with Dan Zeri from Racers, the girls behind the helmet. A big thank you to our Patreon subscribers, Colin, Michelle, Mark, and Robin, for keeping us on the air. You two can invest in the grid network through Patreon or a one time contribution on Buy Me a Coffee. Link in the video description. There's also a link in the video description to Daniel Zeri's website, Racers Behind the Helmet, where Daniel the big story everyone's talked about, we even mentioned it on Grid Live Wrap-Up Sunday. The Iron Dames, they are winners, and they did it at Spa Frankenstein. Hello, everyone. Yes, Joe, as you mentioned, uh, the, the big story from last weekend is definitely the Iron Dames' first ever victory. Uh, and they did it in one of the biggest races of the year, uh, the uh, biggest GT3 race on the planet, the 24-hour Spa Frankenstein. Um, they were really close to that uh, achievement in, in a couple of, of occasions. So uh, this doesn't come like a total surprise to anyone that has followed the journey of the Iron Dames. Uh, but not even them, they were expecting to, to get that first victory at Spa because it's a, such a big race, such a, a difficult race. Uh, with There were like 66 uh, cars on the field. All GT3, so it's not like in Le Mans where you have uh, these different classes. Uh, well, there, there are different classes at Spa, but the, the cars are all the same. So it, it, it's also difficult to manage the traffic uh, during the night. So it's, it's a very complex race. And they did an, an absolutely perfect race. Uh, while they, they were really close, also in, in Le Mans, when they had that uh, uh, puncture in the first uh, 10 minutes of the race, really, and that kind of uh, set them on, on uh, back of, on, on the whole race, even though the, the second part of the race were, was really, really strong. Uh, then it was Monza. They were really strong in Monza. They only finished in second place after leading most of the race in, in WEC um, for, a, for, a, for, for a, time, a, a difficult timing of, of a safety car. So they were getting closer and closer. Um, and Spa finally was their, uh, their big victory. They had such a perfect race, not a mistake from, from the drivers, not a mistake from uh, uh, from the pit crew uh, or, or from the strategy team. Everything worked out absolutely perfectly. Um, they were starting 11th uh, in, in the gold class um, because the, the qualifying was not so smooth. The, the, there was a, a couple of red flags, so both Rahel Fry and Michel Gatting lost their best laps in qualifying. Um, and so they, they were not so happy with qualifying. P11 in, in gold class was definitely not what we, they were expecting. Uh, but then the race was really smooth. They were starting to, to climb up the order straight from, from the beginning. Uh, the, the usual three drivers, so Michel Gatting, Rahel Fry, and Sarah Bovi, were joined on, on, on the team uh, by um, Dorian Pan. Uh, she's 18 year old from France and she's really dominating the Ferrari Challenge Europe this year. So a, a driver that will be uh, a, a big star of the future in GT racing. Uh, and they joined, she joined the, uh, the main lineup for, for this race, for this big race. Um, and she did amazingly well. Uh, she really was on pace. The, all the four drivers were literally separated by tenths of a second in their best laps. So that is very important for, for a, such a long race like uh, like Spa or an endurance racing in general for, for such long races because they were their strength is really the consistency throughout all the stints. Every driver is really lapping in similar lap times. Um, and Dorian did very well and, and uh, Rahel Fry did the start and then it was uh, uh, Michel and then uh, Rahel and Dorian. Dorian also had uh, her first uh, night stints because she, she never had driven in, in a 24-hour race before. Uh, the longest race she had done, I think it was the 6-hour uh, uh, six hour spa in, in WEC. Um, but she, she had never driven in, in, in a night state, so that was more of a challenge for her, but she did very well. Um, and uh, at, at, uh, during a Dorian stint, she was in, uh, for the first time in, in second place. Uh, and then Michelle brought the car up into first place for the first time at the eight-hour mark. Uh, then they were always second, third during the, the, uh, the night. And then at the mid-race mark, at 12 hour uh they they claimed the first place uh, then the uh, the second place mercedes had a bit of, a, of an issue 
uh, they retired, and so they kind of extended their gap. And when when they really had that one lap gap to the second place, uh, they really started, you know, not to worry too much about position, and they were really doing some, some great lap times and kind of extended their gap uh, hour after hour after hour. And at the end of the race, they had a three lap gap to second place finisher in, in Gold Cup. So that was a really outstanding victory for, for Iron Dames. Um, and, and such an historic uh, moment for motor racing because uh, uh, it was the first victory for an all-female lineup in, in, in that race. And I believe also in, in, uh, in such an important race. Uh, they, they, they were for the first time on the on in pole position in WEC uh, just a couple of uh, weeks before. And they were for the first time on the podium in WEC in Monza. So the first victory is really a big achievement for Iron Dames and for uh, women in motorsport and for motor racing in, in, in general. So I think now uh, after this really historic moment, um, they can only, you know, start to uh, to, to to continue on, on that on that pace on, on that momentum, race after race. Now that uh, there's a little bit of, of a, a break uh, between the, now their next race, which will be in Barcelona for the European Le Mans series. Um, but really, I, I can see their future uh, with more and more successes. But the Iron Dame's victory was not the only female victory in, in Spa Franco Champagne, which is even more, uh, you know, historic and, 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 and incredible at, at this point. With Rima Jifali, uh, Saudi female racer, um, that she was also at her first time in, in uh, the 24 hour spa. She, she's had her first year in GT3 racing. If, if we think about this, it's pretty uh, remarkable. She was doing a Formula 4 and, Bri and British Formula 3 last year. And she really uh, switched to uh, GT3 racing this year. She had her first 24 hour race at Dubai in January. Uh, then started her, her own team uh, in GT Open, uh, Theba Motorsport, the first uh, um, really Saudi team uh, at this level. Um, and then she, she tried this big, big race, the 24 hour spa in the Bronze Cup. Uh, and she had a bit of a uh, of a troubled race because they were she they, they were on, on pole position in class. Uh, Rima was like two seconds faster than than her teammates, uh, which was kind of impressive. Uh, they did pole position, uh, and uh, after the, the very first hours, they hit trouble. They had um, they had a, a, a suspension problem which uh, set them back uh, like five five laps back. Uh, they also had a, an accident, and so some, some, even some more troubles. The car lost some more times in, in, in the pits. Even before Rima had even started her first stint, uh, she did uh, quite a lot of stints in during the night. She carried the team through the night, uh, and then uh, again in, in the morning, in the most difficult hours. She was really good, really consistent after that point. Some good strategy, and and then at the towards the end of the of the uh, of the race. Uh, uh, they were back on the same lap of the leader in class, um, and then the, the leader hit trouble in the very final hours, and so they, they uh, at that point they uh, claimed back the, the first place in the bronze cup, and she she won uh, the race with the SPS uh, uh, Automotive Performance and Mercedes. Uh, that was also another big big moment for women in motorsport. But also uh, there was Samantha Tan in in uh, in that race in the Silver Cup, um, and it was a probably her biggest race in her career so far a uh, massive achievement for samantha and nurse st racing uh, uh, already being there with those teams with those drivers some of the most competitive teams and drivers in in gt ray in the world of gt racing uh, for samantha also uh, it's been a, a pretty challenging race because they hit trouble in uh, with five hours into the race with a with a diffuser issue that also set them back for for some for some laps. Uh, but again, they kept climbing up the order, and towards the end, uh, they were P9 in class. So that was quite good, quite a good result for for them uh, in the top ten uh, in silver class. The silver class is was really really competitive this year. Um, so some 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 great stints from Samantha. She never had a mistake throughout the whole 24-hour race. 
during the night and then everything. Very solid race for Samantha. P9 and a top 10 in, in class was really a good result, a result for, for ST racing. So I, I would say that was a very big weekend for, for women in motorsport as well. Very big weekend and one of the most toughest tracks in all of race and spa. We've seen the, how challenging that track is. We know, Daniel, there was some changes made, including some gravel traps. Did that added the sense of like the drivers had to be really perfect because you didn't have a paved runoff, but you could get stuck in the gravel. And did we see any kind of chaos with that gravel trap there during the race? Yes, it definitely added some some more challenge uh, to it. There were some 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 cars that were uh, retrieved from from gravel traps and and lost some uh, some laps due to to mistakes. Um, yes, of course, it, it's such a big field with sixty six GT three cars on track. Uh, Sarah Bowie, for example, it was her sixth uh, uh, year in the sixth, sixth edition in the twenty four hour of Spa, and uh, she told us that the uh, the traffic the traffic management at Spa is so much difficult more difficult than at Le Mans as well because at Le Mans you have those long straights and the prototypes are so much faster than, than the GT cars that they have quite an easy life you know to to an easy task to uh, to overtake uh, and also you as a GT driver you can kind of see the the, the, the prototypes coming up because they are so much faster uh, while in Spa it's uh, it's more of a difficult track um, and, and the performance of the cards are really, really close, you know, and especially in GT World Challenge, the balance of performance is really well done, I, I would say, most, even more than so than in, in other categories. So the, the performance are so close together that it's really difficult for tra uh, time for for the, uh, the traffic management. And so this, of course, we, we drive it with, you know, you have the super pro, uh, so the platinum drivers, the gold drivers, also silver drivers, and you have the bronze drivers, which are like the the, um, the less experienced ones, uh, or even the gentleman drivers. So that it's it's diffi difficult, and some sometimes you you do see some 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 cars making mistakes and ending up in the gravel. And with as you mentioned the track the uh, the new track um, modifications for for this year, there were a couple of, of cars getting stuck into the gravel and having you know to to um, to, to to seek help from the marshals to um, to get out of the gravel traps and and losing some some laps. Uh, but apart from that, I, it was kind of a clean race. There were some some crashes, but uh, luckily not like last year, which you know you, everyone remembers that big big crash at, on top of Radion. Um, this year it was more of a clean race uh, with uh, with some good passing, great battles throughout all the the, the classes. Uh, it, it was a really really great event, I would say. Great event, like you said, we didn't have thankfully no big crash on top of Radeon. You know, a lot of safety work has been done into that, and of course, Formula won't be in spot after summer break. But big congratulations once again to the Iron Dames on their historic win. I agree with you, it's something of a moment where this is really going to start propelling their career and women in motorsports, especially in European sports car racing. Really exciting, and good day. Congratulations to all of them. Over here in the United States this past weekend, Indianapolis Raceway Park, first time since 2011, hosted the NASCAR Camp World Truck Series. For a lot of American fans, especially in the stock car world, Indianapolis Raceway Park used to be a big tradition. The trucks will be there Friday night, Saturday night, the Xfinity Bus Series will be there, and then Sunday, the big Brickyard 400. This year, first time, Indianapolis Raceway Park hosted one of the series, the truck series. A lot of folks are hoping to see the Xfinities go back there and then bring back that old tradition. For Haley Deegan, this was her first visit at Indianapolis Raceway Park with the NASCAR Camp World Truck Series. She qualified 17th. Overall, she's been putting together some better runs, finishing in the top 10 already once this year a couple times, looking at more top 10 finishes, just didn't have the luck. But 17th starting position on a short track, the big thing, of course, just keeping the truck in one piece and avoiding all the crashes and chaos that can occur on a short track. Overall, she did well. 26 trucks finished on the lead lap, which extended to 207 laps due to some of the caution flags. And she finished 13th place, 
It was a late restart. Could have been a great opportunity to try to gain more positions, but also another opportunity to lose positions and get in a mess. But she brought it home in 13th place. So great effort for Haley Deegan. This was the first race for the NASCAR Camp World Truck Series playoffs. So a lot of the playoff drivers bound for the win. It'll be really hard for Haley to try to get away because we always see that the playoff drivers, they do tend to just pull away and get more and more wins. Arkham and Nard Series, they were at Indianapolis Raceway Park as well too, but they don't have a playoff system. It's a year-long points battle, where it's all year long. Tony Brenniger has been fighting to stay in the top five along with her, Amber Balkin. Amber Balkin, of course, had an impressive streak of top 10 finishes Earlier this year, that streak came to an end, and in this race, both of them, unfortunately, did not have a great start to this race. Amber, she qualified 15th position. Looked like she was going to be in a great position to try and put together a good finish, while Tony was one position ahead of her in 14th place at Indianapolis Raceway Park. So the two of them looking for a top 10 finish, and again, just trying to avoid the mess. But that's easier said than done. Unfortunately for Amber, her race came to an end on lap 79 when she got involved in a crash. One of those deals in short track racing, just a BM banging, and sometimes you're just going to end up in the wall or just with too much damage and you cannot continue on. And the same happened for Tony Bredinger. Lap 122, her day was done, so she did not complete the 200 lap race, the Reese's 200 for the Arc Menard series. So both of them. 17th place for Tony Brenniger, 21st place for Amber Balkin in a field of 24. Not exactly a good day for both of them, double DNFs, but overall their season has been pretty good considering they've been in the top 10, battling for that fifth place position in the top five in the point standing. So it's going to be really interesting to see what happens with the Arc Menard series with the remainder of the season. Plus the Camp World Truck Series now, they're down to nine races left in the season as they come down the end of their season and a championship be really interesting to see if Haley Deegan could get a more top 10 finishes and hopefully some top fives as well. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, in, in Spa also we had, uh, as a support race of the big 24-hour race, we had the uh, former regional European championship. Uh, with uh, we, we, This championship started with uh, two female drivers on the grid, Hamza al and Lina Buller. Uh, Lina Buller, unfortunately, after a couple of rounds, um, is, is no more on, on, the, on that grid. She uh, announced that she is trying to, to get back into, into racing. Uh, but uh, she, uh, for, for, for now, for the moment, her season is done after the Monaco Grand Prix. Uh, she's trying to, to find a budget uh, to, uh, to return to racing next year. So hopefully we'll see Lena Buller back on track. Uh, but Hamd al was back on track in Formula Regional at Spa and uh, It was actually her first time uh, racing at Spa. Um, and she had a great start of her weekend. She immediately said, said that she really liked the, the track. Um, and she, she's been having a very steady progress through, uh, the, through the season. Uh, it, it's her first year in Formula 3 machinery. Of course, last year she was racing in Formula 4 in, the, in both the Italian and the EOU-based uh, uh, championship. Uh, and she did really, really well, extremely well. She was the first female driver to get a podium in the Italian Formula 4 Championship, which is massively uh, competitive. She's doing well in the Formula Regional European Championship by Alpine, which is really, again, one of the feeder series with the, uh, you know, the, the, the highest amount of, of, of junior talents, all, all mostly drivers with uh, links to Formula 1 junior programs. Uh, so it, it's kind of a big deal for Hamda to be uh, racing in, in, that, in that series. Um, she had a couple of, of positive races leading up to Spa. Uh, and Spa really was the moment where she was starting to, uh, to uh, climb up the order. She was in practice. She was really good. She was in uh, P13, uh, P12 in in in, uh, in practice, and then qualifying. She had her best qualifying of the season with uh, both in Q1 and Q2. She was P12, um, and, and it, let's remember this this championship has uh, a like a 36 car field, so it, it's a big field of very very competitive driver where one tenth of a second can mean you are into top ten or you're at the end of, of, of the of the of the grid. So. Uh, it's that competitive. And Hamda was P12 in, in both Q1 and Q2. Uh, 
uh, unfortunately, in the races, she, she kind of have some, some of bad luck because in, in race one, uh, she struggled a little bit on, on pace in the first race and she started to, to you know, slip down the order after a couple of laps and she ended in P27 of the, of the end of race one. Uh, and in race two, she was set for, for a stronger race. Um, but unfortunately, there was a big mess at turn one. There were like cars all over the place and, and, and crashing and, and crossing the track with the damage. And unfortunately, another car with, uh, with front rear suspension damage crossed right in front of her and hit her on, on, on the, uh, on the uh, front left tire damaging her suspension as well and, and unfortunately the damage was terminal she uh, limped it back to the pits uh, but the the um the damage could not be fixed uh, in during the race of course and she retired from race two i would say that um apart okay, maybe we have uh, yep i i think uh, we are back uh after, of course, we were we were talking about Hamda's uh, Hamda's uh, race in, in Spa, uh, except for for the results that were not probably what she would expect after after practice and, and qualifying. I would say that it was a very very good step forward for for Hamda uh, because of. the the uh the pace in in both practice and and qualifying was really strong and so coming into a red bull ring next uh, next next round which is going to be in uh, mid september after the summer break uh it's it's a track that she knows well because she's done pretty well there in in formula 4 previously it was also the track where she had her debut in in single seaters in europe so having you know been there for a couple of times and uh, with knowledge prior knowledge of the track i think Hamda can uh, can keep momentum and, uh, and doing uh, keep scoring well in in uh, former regional European Championship. Yeah, I'd be really excited to see if she could keep scoring, getting some points at least, finish out the season on a positive note. One thing about finishing out the season, I a little bit of a misspoke. I said ten races for the Truck Series, seven races, ten races across the NASCAR Cup Series, the Cap World Truck Series. Their playoffs is only seven rounds, so six rounds remaining. A little bit of a the speaker on my part earlier today one series that's coming down they got less than 10 races ago the national hot rod association Campbell world series round 13 of 22 from seattle washington the northwest nationals which had pro stock top fuel and funny car as well so starting with the pro stock erica anders she is looking to get another championship been a while for her after she didn't get it last year came home second place in seattle but the big thing she clinched her spot in the nhra countdown that's their version of the playoffs similar to nascar after a regular season they have a postseason where the top 10 contend for the championships that is the national hot rod association countdown she wrapped up her spot for the pro stock series alexis de joria she went out in the second round in Seattle. She is eighth place in the points, so she is still in the top 10 looking to lock up her spot. The points leader has, so still a way for her to do that. The big thing is she can just stay in the top 10. Right now, she's in eighth place. She's in a really good spot. Brittany Force, she still leads the top fuel championship point standings, but only by 75 points. So she is not locked into the countdown just yet. Big thing for her, going out there, running well. She ran well. She got second place in Seattle, coming up short in the finals. However, she did have to beat Leah Pruitt, who won in Denver, or, or excuse me, Denver, Colorado, earlier in the year. Big thing for her is just continue to finish because she is sixth place in the point stand. So both of them well in the stands to get into that countdown. The big thing is just staying in the top ten in the runs qualifying because in the national hot rod association there's no provisionals there's no locked teams everyone has to qualify to get in and if you don't qualify you miss the show it's uncommon to hear of john force and any of the big names not qualifying for a race but it does happen in the nhra and of course that was the 13th round of 22 so they're coming up towards the end of their season their next race will be in kansas august 12th through the 14th 
Topeka, Kansas for the NHRA Nationals, one of the most older tracks that also has not only the road course portion, but the drag strip, which utilizes part of that road course as well. So big weekend for NHRA, August 12th to the 14th. And Daniel, what are some of the upcoming races you're going to be following this race weekend? Well, we have also some some interesting races to follow this weekend. One of them, one of the biggest ones, is IndyCar, of course, with uh, an at Nashville uh, street circuit with the return of Simona Di Silvestro on the grid after her previous two races with Pareta Autosport. Um, it's the uh, the last of the uh, scheduled race for for the team. Um, so we are really looking forward to see Simona after, especially after Tatiana Calderon. Um, uh, you know, couldn't finish the, the, the season uh, um, in, in IndyCar. Um, also, we have uh, IMSA Michelin Pilot Challenge at Road America with two very competitive drivers uh, in, in the two uh, categories. Uh, in, in TCR, we have Taylor Agler, who is uh, currently leading the standings. And then in GS, we have Sheena Monk, who had a really strong run uh, last time out. Uh, then we have, for example, well, also uh, in, racing in, in Road America, we have the uh, Lamborghini Super Trofeo, uh, which uh, this, uh, this usually there are two female, two, two, two women on, on, uh, on the grid. Now there, there are th three this upcoming weekend. Uh, we have Ashton Harrison, we have uh, Charlie Martin and Ashley Freiberg, who, who is uh, returning to racing after a couple of years. Uh, then we have uh, uh, some other interesting races in Germany at the Nürburgring with the uh, ADAC GT4 with Gabriela Gilkova, she's really strong in uh, in uh, all GT4 racing in Europe. She was also in Spa for the uh, GT4 Europe race, uh, supporting the 24-hour race, uh, and she was P4. So a very, very strong uh, driver in GT4 racing. She's now racing in, in this upcoming weekend in, uh, in Germany at the, at the Nürburgring. Um, then we have ADAC TCR Germany uh, with Jessica Bachmann. She's really been super dominant this year in the German Championship. She's coming from the World Cup at the WTCR. Um, so the, the TCR Germany uh, has been really strong this year. Um, also, we have a couple of Formula 4 championships to, to look up, to look forward to, like in the, the Brazilian one in Interlagos with uh, Aurelia Nobels, uh, who is really a young, um, upcoming talent from, from Brazil. Also in, in Japan, we have Formula 4 Japan with Rio Shimono. Uh, she was really strong in, in Japan TCR last year, and curiously, she's made the, uh, the uh, switch from TCR to Formula 4. She's having a little bit of a more challenging adaptation season, but hopefully she can uh, finish this season on, on a high. Uh, then we have TCR UK at Castlecom with Jessica Hawkins, the W Series driver. Uh, going back and forth from uh, Formula 3 regional cars of the W Series to the TCR cars in, in the UK Championship. We have Porsche Carrera Cup Scandinavia in, in Sweden with Mikaela Olen Kotulinski, the driver that has been also racing in, uh, in Xtreme E. She's making her first appearance in the uh, Carrera Cup Scandinavia, and which is also uh, her first, very first race in GT4 machinery. Uh, then we have, uh, uh, we already mentioned the Lamborghini Super Trofeo, and we have also the NASCAR Mexican uh, series at uh, Super Ovalo Potosino. We have Arca Menards with uh, Bri Tony Breidinger and the Amber Balkan uh, this, this weekend racing, uh, um, also again in, in, in Arca. And then uh, we have, uh, uh, well, I think we recapped pretty much every, every uh, races that are going on uh, in the upcoming weekend. So. Next, uh, next week, again, uh, hopefully we will report on, on some victories from, from some, some of these drivers. And of course, we encourage everyone to visit the website, racersbehindthehelmet.com. There you can get a calendar to see all the races that are going on and follow the races as they take place. And of course, over on the homepage, read all the latest articles from Daniel and the staff there of some of the women racing around the world. A lot of racing going on, a lot of historic moments, including once again the Iron Dames taking that first win at Spa Frankenstein. Really very exciting effort by all there. And a big congratulations to the Iron Dames. And we want to thank everyone for watching today's program. We encourage everyone to be sure to best integrate in their help us stay on the air through our Patreon or buy me a coffee. And if you also want to invest in the stock market, visit public.com. Use our referral code GRIDNET. That'll get you free stock to start investing. 
and using their tools to learn how to invest in the stock market. Great website that we're definitely encourage everyone to check out. And of course, we encourage everyone to subscribe to the Green Network right here on YouTube or if you're watching on Twitch. We're going to be busy this weekend with Saturday, Great Life Pre-Race, but we're going to preview all the races going on. MotoGP is back. Very excited to see them. So we're going to have Julia on the show as well. And then Sunday, Great Life Wrap-Up, where we're going to recap all the racing. And then we do it all over again with Monday, Great Life Encore. Wednesday, Great Tonight. Yesterday, Kobe and Adam discussing about all the ongoing news with the contract situation now with Oscar Piastri, Alex Polo, McLaren seems to be the common factor. And here, then we'll be back on the air next week. For Dan Lazari to have Racers and Girls Behind the Helmet, I'm Joe San Diego. Thank you for watching today's show. We'll see you next time. Don't be an anonymous investor. Join the stock market social media platform, public.com. Invest any amount of money and share with friends and new friends. Discover new opportunities, such as new companies and potential business partners, and useful tools for beginners and share your experience with friends on public.com. Link in the video description gets you $5 for being a Grid Network viewer. Use the referral code GRIDNET for your free $5 to invest. Start investing and networking on public.com dot com.